I know some people um, work more tonally, and they're what they call a, a whole uh, school of tonalists. I guess if there's such a thing, I would consider myself more of a colorist. <laughs> um, and I made it something if it isn't already. So I wanted to just point out blue and orange where they're sitting next to each other. They look very colorful, very vibrant. They're really, really singing. And yet right here, where some of that blue and orange got into each other, which to me is just beautiful watercolor, it sort of dulled it out a little bit. And that is how I created this whole area underneath of the bird's nest is with those two colors, uh, those uh, complementary colors of blue and orange. They're just a little bit more mixed here than they are here. And that's a nice way to get your painting to look very painterly. Now I want to show you another one here, which is pumpkins. And uh, I mentioned we're going to be doing a lot of those. I'll be definitely demoing these. But I want to show you here is how to use color wheel to your benefit. And now I'm going from white, which is of course our paper, down to a yellow, warm orange, cool orange, red into reddish violet. So I used not more orange to get me there, but I used both sides of the color wheel to get me there and then the violet to create that nice shadow. And if you'll notice, the shadows that are created from the pumpkins are really all the colors that are in here, canceling at each other. We have the red and green, the yellow and violet, and the blue and orange. And those are creating these beautiful shadows that give us a real complementary feel to this. And here, complement sitting next to each other, orange and blue. Perfect opportunity to use complements in both ways, in muddying up and in making them really spark next to each other.